Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Chloe, aka Georgie Allen, and today I'm going to be giving you the ultimate checklist for packing for university because it's nearly time to go back to university unless you're at Oxford or Durham, in which case we have to wait another month, uh, which is probably a good thing given how much reading I've got to do. But I'm a second year now, so I've had the experience of freshers and I know you want to take everything with you, but I'm going to tell you all of the things that you really do and really don't need to take with you to university. Okay, so I split the list up into five different categories essentials, clothes, kitchen, bathroom and bedroom and I also enlisted the help of my best friend to check this over so we do think that we've got everything. So before I start this list I just want to emphasise two important points especially if you're a fresher because I know you want to take everything with you but theoretically it's not very practical and one you can buy things when you get there so if you don't have enough room to carry everything whether that's because you can't fit it in a car or you're traveling from far away or via public transport like me. Um, yeah, you can buy things down there. There are shops, it's all fine. Secondly, you don't need that much stuff and university rooms aren't that big and don't tend to have that much storage. So you might not actually have room for everything that you want to bring. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's get on with the list. So the first part of the list is my essentials and these aren't necessarily related to lifestyle, but they're things like documents that you just really need to have with you. So I'm going to go through this quite quickly. Passport, NHS card, which is important for signing up for your new GP surgery when you go to uni, uh, ID that isn't a passport, something you can carry around, um, something that you can use when you go to a bar or a club, like provisional driving license or um, driving license if you have one. You'll probably get some sort of reading list and a set of letters from the uni um, it might have things to do when you get there on, they might have told you some things to bring, it might have a mapping of the university, things like that. They will definitely have been sending you letters before you get there, so I would probably take some of those with you. Any details that you have that aren't digital on your banking, your phone contract or any insurance that you have, all of this will be important if you then need to get something sorted out and you don't have it digitally, I would just keep everything with you. Money for Freshers Week because your student loan won't come in until halfway through the month probably um, so you might want to have some money put aside for when you get there. Um, I actually took cash, I think it helped me budget better but that's just a personal preference. And the other thing would be any chargers, any portable chargers, um, a USB if you have one they're usually quite helpful for storing work and taking it from a laptop to the library if you want to print things out. Um, a hard drive if you use one of those and the final thing would be some sort of mini medical kit for yourself so this would kind of include plasters, paracetamol, ibuprofen, um, any vitamins that you take, any medication that you take, um, maybe some tablets in case you get sick, if you get travel sick, anything that you could use when you're hungover, if you get food poisoning, things like this. Um, you might not need them and yes you can go to a pharmacy or a shop when you're down in uni but chances are if you don't prepare it beforehand you'll end up getting ill and then suddenly needing it and not being able to get up to go out and buy it yourself um, so I had kind of all my flu stuff and I did end up getting flu and I wouldn't have been able to get to the shop to be able to buy um, the kind of cold and flu sachets and things like that so yeah I would just take that beforehand. So the second part of the list is on clothing and once again I'll emphasise you might not have that much storage so don't take your entire wardrobe because you won't have anywhere to put it. So I think the most important thing with clothing is to take what you wear on a daily basis. Personally I do tend to dress kind of small casual, I like my blouses and my shirts quite a lot and I would usually wear these with a pair of jeans or I would wear a pinafore, maybe a dress, that's kind of my sort of thing. But a lot of people don't dress like that, um, you're definitely not required to dress smart, they won't say anything, they won't tell you to dress a certain way in lectures or seminars, so you know if you tend to wear jeans and a hoodie every day then take that to uni because that is what you'll be wearing at uni too. <laughs> the other most important set of clothing would probably be for going out and 
Of course, clubbing is quite a big thing at uni, but even if you don't go clubbing, you will probably still need some smart or nice outfits for going out. So societies have their own events, so you might be going to those, you might be going to a pub or a bar with your friends um, for some drinks, alcoholic or not. Um, or you might just be going to a restaurant because a lot of people like to go out for meals and yeah, that's all important. I think people like to dress up for these sorts of things. So it's definitely important to have that sort of going out attire in your wardrobe. So just a side note for formals, um, and this can be at any university to do with a formal ball or a society event, things like that might have a dress code. Um, if you're at Durham or Oxbridge, you will have formals where you can go on a weekly basis um, and they do have a dress code, so just covering that. Um, this is my go-to dress. Um, this is what I wore for matriculation. I've worn this formal a few times. I have a few others. Um, it's probably best to have maybe three. Um, you can rotate between them. People don't mind if you wear the same thing. You're going to be going with your friends, so it's not really a big deal. But I just want to show that off because I know I thought there was a lot of pressure to have um, really formal dresses, um, floor length dresses. I have a couple of those that I took with me and I only wore a floor length dress once um, and that was my choice. Nobody else did. Um, that was for college marriage formal because that's a little bit of a bigger deal in our college. Um, so I think people picked nicer dresses for that. But again, there's no pressure really, it just has to be something smart. If you really don't have anything, you can just wear, um, say, a shirt and a pair of trousers or a skirt and that is completely fine. And onto the rest of the clothing you'll need. Obviously, pyjamas, underwear, things like that, um, pretty standard. Slippers or flip-flops or both, important. Um, if you're going to share a bathroom, I would recommend flip-flops because the floor and the bathroom are probably both going to be filthy. Um, I cleaned my bathroom quite a lot, students are not really the cleanest, um, yeah. I've heard quite a lot of people say that they prefer to wear flip-flops when they go to the shower. A lot of people tell you that you need to bring costumes to uni for events. Um, I've never really needed costumes. I've only gone to two events that had a theme and I just bought some clothes from Primark, I think it was, um, for the night. And that was fine really. Um, if you do have a couple of costumes that you want to take with you, fancy dress things, then they probably won't take up too much room. But if you don't have any, then don't worry about it because you can always buy stuff when you're there. And the last thing to remember would be any fitness attire. This is particularly true if you do any societies to do with sport or dance. Um, me and my best friend both do tap dance and we both forgot our tap shoes because we all remembered our other shoes and completely forgot those. So, you know... It's an important thing to remember if you're going to want to do some sort of society when you get down there or just go to the gym really. And finally my college wife Sophie reminded me that it will probably be very cold towards the end of first term and the beginning of second term so make sure you bring some sort of options to layer up. Um, hoodies, jumpers, sweatshirts, all the usual. Make sure you have a big coat for the winter and a scarf and a hat. All of those things are very important. So part three of the list is for the kitchen and the main thing that I've heard a lot of people say in university halls and things like that um, is that it's better to take more things in case your friends are coming around and you want to share food or share drinks. Um, this is completely fine and I think students do tend to go around each other's rooms or kitchens quite a lot and share food or drinks but everyone will have their own set of glasses and plates and you don't need to take 10 because you think that you might need them for your nine different friends um they can bring their own plate <laughs> i used to go around my friend sophie's room quite a lot um we would cook together and i would go and sit in her room and eat i would bring my own glass my own pan my own plate and my own fork um and that would be fine and then i wouldn't need anything off her so people do do this um there's not a problem with that. You don't need to take that much stuff. So on that note, um, important thing that I'd forgotten, I've been reminded, a colander or a sieve. Um, this is good for washing things. I think a sieve is actually probably more helpful because it's really helpful for draining rice. Um, and it is a thing that people cook quite a lot. Pasta as well. Um, 
rise especially though because sometimes the holes in a colander can be too big and the rice will just drop through and that's not good. <laughs> like the time when I tried to make quinoa, um, I tried to cook quinoa once and yeah, I lost most of it to the sink, which was fun. A small chopping board, a knife, um, the sharp knife will be used for cutting things and it will also work as a peeler. People always say to take a peeler, um, I don't know, I've never seen anyone use a peeler before to be fair, or a grater for that matter. I think unless you know you're definitely going to use it, I wouldn't really bother. Two sets of cutlery in case your friend does need some, or for example if you haven't washed one set then you can use the other and just wash them both afterwards. A glass like this is pretty much perfect for anything, whether it be um, juice, water or any alcoholic drinks. Um, I have two of these and a smaller one which I use for my orange juice on morning. Um, I don't think you really need more than that, honestly. Shot glass, if you think you're going to be taking shots, although honestly they're disgusting, I don't know why you'd want to. Um, two modes, or if you're an avid tea or coffee drinker, they're probably about five. At least one big plate and one small plate, that might be enough, you might want two of each. Um, a cereal bowl and some sort of big wider bowl, I think they'd probably call them a pasta dish, but they're kind of multi-purpose bowls. I think that is the most helpful thing that you can have because whether you're making pasta, whether you're making a salad, whether you're having some avocado toast, anything you can stick in there, it works well for anything. One saucepan, one frying pan is pretty standard. Um, if you know there's certain pans that you need for meals that you like to make, then you might want a bigger one or buy a wok or something like that. One thing to check though is that um, some of the hobs might be induction hobs and these require different slightly more expensive pans um if that's the case i would recommend tk maxx because that is where i got uh, my frying pan and it was really good and pretty cheap so the final thing on the kitchen list would be that you don't need to bring any food um i understand that a lot of people's parents want them to kind of feel set up when they arrive uh, so they would probably pack things like pasta or bags of rice or tea and coffee, all of the things that you can store. But again, if you don't have any room in your car or you're bringing a suitcase because you're going to uni via public transport and you can't fit these things in, it doesn't matter. I think either way, you'd probably still have to go to a supermarket when you get there to buy some other things. So on to the bathroom stuff. And this might be quite a speedy list because quite a lot of these things are pretty standard. So shampoo, conditioner, shower gel, uh, a razor or anything you use for hair removal if you do, um, deodorant, skincare, makeup. Um, on the subject of makeup though, if you own a lot of makeup palettes or eyeshadow palettes, um, which I know a lot of people do, you probably won't have a chance to use all of them all the time and university gets quite stressful. I honestly don't know many people who manage to keep up a full face of makeup the entire way through the term. Um, if you're the sort of person who wears eyeshadow all the time on nights out, then maybe just pick your favourite or your favourite couple and that will definitely get you through the time at uni. Um, these are the only two that I have at the moment, um, so they're not that big and I'll probably take both of them, but I think if I had a third one I probably wouldn't take that. The second part of the bathroom list is only for things that you can buy when you get there and you could buy these before but as I said it will be taking up room that you probably don't have and you can just pop to your local Wilco or Poundland and buy them for cheap when you arrive. So all of the cleaning stuff you'll need because shared accommodation is not very clean. Bleach, disinfectant, uh, wipes, plastic free ones preferably though. Um, some sort of dusting spray and cloth, fern to polish, that sort of thing. Uh, sponges or a dishcloth, depending on what you use for your dishes. Um, sponges are quite good in general though for the room, so you probably want to have some. Um, hand sanitizer. In this COVID world, um, we all need some hand sanitizer. And gloves. Because as I said, university accommodation, especially shared university accommodation, is not that clean. So if you are cleaning, then put some gloves on. 
And speaking of COVID, something that definitely should have been on the essentials list now is, of course, some masks. Um, you're going to have to wear these within supermarkets and things like that. Um, but I've also been told that I have to wear them um, during my face-to-face -face teaching sessions. So within seminars and supervisions, I will also be wearing a mask. Right, on to the final category, which is things for the bedroom. And these are probably the more exciting things, um, although all of the others are still essentials. Command strips, everybody loves them. And also command hoots, which are very good for putting up things like fairy lights. Um, in general, you're not allowed to adhere anything to walls within student accommodation. Um, this is because things like sellotape, blue tack, white tack will all mark the walls um, and damage them later, which you could be charged for. Uh, command strips, on the other hand, tend to be acceptable because providing you take them off correctly, they don't mark the walls at all. So I had three of my paintings up last year and I wasn't even the one who cleared my bedroom, it was actually some people who worked at the college. So I was quite worried about this but completely fine. When I went to check the room there were no marks on the walls and yeah, I definitely wasn't told off for them or anything. Actually in our college accommodation contract there was specifically a line talking about command strips and the fact that they were allowed. The second thing would be decorative items for your room and especially for the walls which can look quite bare. Um, you're going to spend quite a lot of time in this room and there are definitely going to be some tough moments so you want to make it homely, you want to make it cosy and decorative items are the way to do this. Two things I would recommend the most, um, the first would be fairy lights. Um, they are a classic at this point but I think they give a really warm feeling to the room. Um, I had three sets, so I had some gold ones, some rose gold ones, and then later on I bought some pink ones. Sometimes when I was working late at night I would put my lamp on and my fairy lights and I think that would give the room a really nice feel. The other thing I would recommend would be photos of your friends and family. There will be moments when you feel low or you're struggling a bit or you're really stressed about work or you're ill and I think having those faces on the wall for you to look at really just gives you some confidence because you kind of remember the people who have confidence in you. Buying plants. Um, I would say buy plants when you get there if you want them for your room because plants are quite difficult to transport. Um, obviously if you're not a fresher um, then you might already have some from last year that you want to take back down. Congratulations to you if you did not kill your plant. Um, my cactus and my succulent are thriving that I bought on Freshers Week uh, and this is the thing, in Freshers Week they do tend to sell plants, um, they had some at the Freshers Fair and within our college. Tupperware, um, pretty standard, you need boxes to be able to put food in for when you're on the go, um, when you need to take snacks out to eat in the library, or not in the library but probably outside of the library. Um, and if you're really organised, meal prep uh, is really good. So if you can split a meal into two and put it into some Tupperware and eat it the next day, um, it not only means that you're more organised and have more time to get on with work, but it also might save you some money. Um, I do think people tend to start off with good intentions when it comes to meals and by the time halfway through term comes and you're tired and you just want to go to bed then you're probably not going to be using the Tupperware as much um, but I do think it's important. You might want a flask if you're a tea and coffee drinker which a lot of people are. Um, I got this one from Typo, it's a screw top one because a lot of my travel mugs have actually leaked um, although I do like my Maudlin Keep Cup. Um, I actually use that just to take to the college library because I'm not going to spill it in the distance it takes me to walk to the library um, but I was hoping this would kind of work in my bag. The other thing of course is to take a water bottle or even two. Um, they're something that are pretty standard and very important. Okay let's talk stationery. Um, I love stationery. I love pretty stationery but most of the time you don't need all of it and it takes up a lot of space in your room to be honest. So these are the essentials that you definitely need. Um, pencil case, set of highlighters for highlighting texts, um, one or two notebooks. You probably won't need them but I usually have one just for writing random notes in or appointments or things for phone calls, anything like that. Um, lined or plain paper, 
even if you type up your notes on a tablet or laptop you'll probably need some paper at some point so whatever your preference um, have some of that in stock um, pens one pencil one ruler one rubber one pencil sharpener unless you know you're doing a subject where you're going to use pencils a lot obviously if you're doing a science subject or something like that you might need some different more specialized equipment um, so make sure you remember that as well if you've seen my other vlogs you'll know that i always have a stapler in my room you might not need a stapler but i know at my university we have to hand in essays every week and we always have to hand them in in person um, so we have to use a stapler one way or another and it's just better to have one in your room sometimes than have to find one in the library. Remember all of your hair care things, so hair dryer, hair accessories, um, if you use curlers or straighteners, anything like that. You'll probably want to take something to store your jewellery in if you wear it. Um, I took this because it was pretty small. Um, I was a little worried about it getting smashed but top tip, um, wrap things up in towels. When you're taking them down and it usually means that your breakables won't get broken i also took this mirror down with me i think it is good to have some sort of portable mirror because you probably will have at least one in your room but it might not be the best and it might not be well placed um mine was above the sink it was really small and it had a lot of stains and paint on top of it um it really just wasn't very good as a mirror and it was also facing kind of sideways to the window so it was really bad for doing makeup. I took that with me and I would always put it on the windowsill every day which meant that I could do my makeup with the light shining on me which is of course a lot easier to do. And on that note um, you might want to invest in a full length mirror. Um, it may seem a bit extreme but student accommodation never seems to have full length mirrors for some reason and I think they're really helpful. Uh, you can get them cheaply if you go to Wilco, which is where I got mine. Um, it's white, it goes over the door. I bought it in Freshers Week. Um, they were £12 originally, but mine was in the sale for the students and I got it for £8. So very cheap, very helpful. Okay, so let's talk bags. So the bag you're probably going to need the most would be a backpack. Uh, this is the one I used last year. Pretty standard, pocket in the front, pocket inside laptop sleeve and then a big bit in the middle. Um, the reason people tend to carry backpacks around is probably because of carrying laptops. Um, it's just so helpful even if you don't need a laptop for lectures you might be taking one to the library. For me I would have my laptop inside and then the big bit in the middle I would have a water bottle, a coffee cup and then being an English student probably about five boots. Um, the pockets were good for everything else you need, all your essentials. Um, some people do have a kind of big handbag instead. Sometimes the really big open ones would be good for fitting your laptop in and everything else. Um, for me, I personally feel more secure with a backpack because I just think if your handbag's that open, um, it doesn't make my laptop feel very secure. Personal preference though, um, people do have different things, but backpacks are definitely very popular at uni. The other main bag I took was this one and I couldn't actually fit my laptop in here so it wasn't that helpful to me to be honest um, but it is just a nice bag to have. Probably more important than your big handbag though would be your little bags. Um, these are important for going out, popping to the shop, going to the laundry, um, going to meet a friend, anything like that. If you're not going on a big outing or you just can't be bothered to pack a bag, the little ones are perfect. Um, I have this sparkly one which I tend to use for nights out. This is a little bit more fancy if I'm wearing something quite plain. This is my standard black handbag. Um, I actually got this for £3 in the sale so I'm not particularly bothered about it getting damaged. Again, this is quite good for clubbing because if it gets dirty you can just wipe it down um, completely fine if it gets damaged. I'm not too bothered about it because as I said it didn't really cost very much. And the final one I took to uni would be this one. Um, this was my standard everyday bag. Um, it's probably why the clasp is starting to lose its colour. Um, but this actually has different pockets in which is quite helpful so I had a different one for my key, for my card, um, for my purse, 
other things I might need in the back. Um, yeah, they're quite small, but you can really fit everything you actually need in there um, without taking things like umbrellas, shopping bags, things like that. But while I remember, shopping bags, very important. Um, over the shoulder, fold away shoppers, the ones you get in the little pouches that you roll out, uh, very helpful for shopping. Um, a bag for life, anything like that that you can take to the supermarket. You do not want to be buying carrier bags, not only because it's bad for the environment, but because they're not actually very good bags and they'll just rip. So now let's talk about shoes because I think the most important thing to say here would be that you need comfortable shoes because you're probably going to have to walk quite a lot. Um, some people in Cambridge do ride a bike of course but you always need to walk places um, whether from your accommodation to the supermarket, whether to the library, whether to lectures, whether just between different parts of your campus um, if you're at a campus uni something like that, um, you'll always need comfortable shoes and shoes you can walk a long way in. So make sure to pack some trainers is what I'm saying. The other shoes that you definitely need would be um, some smart shoes in case you have any formal occasions. Um, I would recommend some kind of jazzy shoes, um, whether these are flats or heels, it's up to you of course um, and your preferences. I have some stilettos that I wear for formal um, and these are just quite good to have for special occasions. Um, and the last thing would be some boots, especially in the winter. They're good for keeping your feet warm and they're quite good to walk in. Um, I think those are kind of the essentials. Obviously if you have a lot of pair of shoes then you'll probably want to bring more but I would just recommend comfortable shoes um, as a priority and not taking too many because as I said you probably won't have room for them in your accommodation. <laughs> and finally there are a few more things that you'll probably need um, that don't really fall into any of the categories. So these are for your room, coat hangers because you'll probably not be provided with them. Um, I wouldn't recommend taking them, just buy them when you get there because they're another thing that take up so much room. Um, and you can pop to somewhere like Wilco and get quite a few of them for quite cheap. An extension lead or two, these are helpful for putting under your desk um, if you want to plug multiple things in at once um, or if your plugs are in slightly weird places in your room um, and you need to kind of run an extension lead around the room to where you're sleeping or working or anything like that. Um, I had one that ran from next to my bed, behind a cabinet and under a table and this is where I would plug in my phone and my kettle. On that note, a kettle is something that I would recommend if uh, you drink tea and coffee. They're usually allowed but do check with whoever's running your accommodation. Um, there will probably be a kettle in the kitchen but your kitchen might not be next to your room and also when you've just gotten up and it's 7 o'clock, you're going to your 9am and you need a cup of coffee, you don't really want to be walking to the kitchen in your pyjamas to make a cup of coffee. Um, sometimes it's just convenient to have one in there. And again, if you get ill, um, it's quite nice to make hot drinks and it's more convenient if the kettle is in your room. <laughs> you may want to buy a lamp. Um, I was actually provided with one, but it didn't work so I ended up buying my own anyways. Again, I would recommend Wilco for this. I got mine from there for pretty cheap and I haven't had any issues with it. So the last thing you may need is a drying rack or clothes horse. Um, some people get the large ones and they kind of fold out like this and you hang your clothes down each section of them. Um, really handy if you need to dry a lot of things. We have a tumble dryer in our laundry so I don't usually need to dry a lot of things. Instead, I actually have a kind of mini drying rack. So if you open a drawer, it clips onto the side and folds out um, and I hang my things in between. Quite small like this and folds up small enough to fit into a suitcase, which is really helpful. I would still recommend something like this, even if you have a tumble dryer, because when you come out of the shower, towels tend to be damp and you don't want to be putting them in where your clean clothes are. The other thing is, sometimes you may want to hand wash clothes if you only have a few things that you need, um, rather than paying for a large wash, which could be a lot more expensive. So that is the end of my university packing checklist, um, and good luck to all of you, whether you're starting university or whether you're returning to university this year, it is very exciting. Thank you all for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please leave a like down below and subscribe to stay up to date with my content when I go back to university to start second year 
Um, tell me down in the comments whether you're starting university this year or whether you're returning to university and if there's anything on my university checklist that I've forgotten. Uh, apart from that, I think that's everything, so I'll see you on the next video. Bye!